Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to episode two of Building with Rohan. I have done a ton of work between episodes. First off, I removed all the dirt here. It looks horrible. There's a reason for this. I do have a plan, in fact. Over there, there is a giant naturally spawned hole in the ground, and I was thinking it would be really cool if I made that river flow into that hole, which means digging down a whole bunch. So I've removed the dirt because, well, I need a beacon to do in this next part, which leads me to piece two. I could, <laughs> hi zombie. I couldn't go any longer without getting some, uh, some of the more basic, well, at least basic to me, things done in my world because going without shulker boxes and without an elytra and without a beacon is too much for me. I did it for one episode, that's long enough. So I went on a couple of adventures. I actually went, the very first adventure I did was I headed over to a woodland mansion and I conquered that thing. So I had this bright idea that early game, I should go after this uh, woodland mansion that I got a map to find from a, a cartographer. And I've arrived at the woodland mansion and I'm feeling like this is a really stupid idea. But we're gonna go for it anyway. Uh, I don't know if I've ever actually done this, so we'll see if this is uh, of any entertainment value or not. I guess it depends how many times I die and how successful this is. What was that noise? Oh, really? I have no idea what the mechanics are on those. Ah! Ah! Hey, no! Got him! Oh, I'm a legend. I wasn't scared at all. No fear. What the heck's hitting me? Oh, a spider. No, they got like a cauldron. That's where you poo, okay? You poo in there. Got it? No poo elsewhere. I see the brown marks on the ground. You always been up and pooping in your cauldron. Trying not to die while we take down the mansion thing. Yeah, trying not to die. I'm unkillable. Ah! No! Ah! <laughs> no. How do people do this on hardcore? Those people are crazy. Shield. Bang. Genius. Yay, a potato. That's definitely the loot I was looking for. Look at chicken. Ah, <laughs> ninja. I will take your bookshelf. No education for you. I know it doesn't really look like I won, but I won. Okay, I promise. The next adventure that I went on was going to the nether, and I found, oh boy, did I ever get lucky, guys. I gotta show you this. I got phenomenally lucky with the best nether fortress I possibly could have found. On one of my very first trips to the nether, I found this giant soul sand valley, and I wasn't sure if the, the large biome world and the overworld would apply to the nether too, but I kinda think that it does because this soul sand valley lasts for a little ways. So I started exploring the soul sand valley, collecting some bones, this and that, shooting out some gas out of the air, hoping to find a nether fortress, and luck would have it, I did find a nether fortress just at the end of this pathway here. I was just ripping around here thinking, oh, how do I get further out there? And I looked out here, and I think I had my render distance on a little bit longer. Maybe I can spot it. I saw that, right there. That is the obvious pillar of a nether fortress, and so I mined my way this way, punched a hole through here, and what do you know, it was absolutely covered in mobs, because obviously the only thing spawning right now are mobs in the nether fortress, which is terrifying. I went in there and I killed a few wither skeletons. I collected enough wither skeleton skulls for two beacons already, so that giant hole in the ground project can start happening right away. Hold on, I lied. I actually collected enough wither skeleton skulls for three beacons, not two. Um, so all three beacons here in this chest right now, I've actually got enough iron from all of my mining as well to, uh, to build a whole beacon platform. So we can tackle this project a little bit later on here. But first, the one last thing that I got done between episodes, and that is I did some interior work. <clears throat> I'm trying my hardest to not leave interiors incomplete. I'm trying really hard. It is very difficult and I have spent many an hour in the evenings after work just staring at the walls of this interior trying to figure out what to do. You may notice right away that the interior, this is a little work area that we showed last episode, already has almost like a steampunky or cyberpunky bit in here. It's because redstone is almost impossible to make look medieval, but I didn't want to just hide all of my farms in the ground. This is what I call the mud monster. Uh, I saw a video from Il Mango a while ago about a really simple, easy, small mud farm, and I liked the mechanics he used for getting the water bottles, but I didn't feel like digging it up immediately. I wanted to zero tick the, the blocks in. So if we stand here and we feed the blocks in, oh, I actually already have dirt in there. You can see it gets shoved over super fast, although it seems to be, oh, there we go. Oh wait, no, it's being funny. What do we do on top of the torch? There we go. 
nice and loud, good noisemaker, and it all gets shoved down into the basement here. Oof. I am quite happy with how this interior has turned out. I used a little bit of the glow lichen on the ceiling to add some color and texture, and then these beams just below the ceiling add a lot of depth, so. Anyway, back to the mud monster. Down here is where all of those get blocks get shoved to into the, the basement, and we convert them all to mud, and then I've actually got dripstone underneath here to convert the bottom row to clay. Because, as you guys should be aware from last episode where it was impossible to find any freaking warm biomes because they're hundreds of thousands of blocks away, I have my doubts I'll ever find a Badlands biome. So I think we're gonna have to come up with other ways to get enormous quantities of terracotta. And right now, clay seems to be the way to do it. Either from converting mud into clay or going and finding lush caves and collecting clay like crazy. Obviously, in my many hours of staring at this, I didn't finish the interior altogether, but I did build one other farm in here. I got a pumpkin and melon farm so that I can get a few more trades going on with the villagers. Nothing too crazy, just a, a little bit of a stacked farm here. We'll find some way to incorporate it in the interior. I don't want to cram this castle. Don't mind the missing chunk of ceiling. <clears throat> I don't want to cram this castle too full of farms, but I do want a lot of the ones that I don't feel like having dedicated buildings or builds for. I'll probably put some of them in here, maybe a starter, sugarcane. Wait, is it called sugarcane or reeds? Sugarcane, that's what it's currently called. Old people call it reeds. Um, <laughs> we'll put a sugarcane farm in here, um, and then we'll have some regular build decorations in here as well. I love how this has turned out. I think we did some fun stuff with the barrels up there, uh, and the cobbled deep slate combined with the other lighter gray colors to create a lot of depth and texture in here. I'm very happy with it. I have quickly come to realize two things. One, I may have bitten off way more than I can chew, and two, this project is looking very underwhelming. It's, uh... Yeah, I guess I kind of started to shape a little bit of that cliff. I, I say kinda, trust me, that's nowhere near finished. But, um, I'm not so sure about this. This may have been of a terrible idea. I mean, worst case scenario, right, we just cover it back up with dirt, pretend this hole doesn't exist, and I have a ton of stone and cobblestone. I might... Hold on. Where did it go? I've got a bit of a chest monster going- Ah, there it is. There- It just didn't render. Uh, I have a ton of stone and cobblestone, which is actually super handy. I'm gonna need that for the future. But this has to go way deeper, and I wanted like a river coming in there, and it sloped down into this. So, uh... Either I gotta dig a long way further, or I have to adjust the total depth I'm going to- I was only gonna go to about like that that little ring there about that deep so obviously this is a lot deeper than I would need to go and then have that opening sort of some underground something or other who knows what I mean I got ambitious plans right now yeah this is very uh, it doesn't look like I've made much progress I have one major issue I have run into early game trying to dig a giant hole is I have like two pickaxes and constantly trying to repair those with either a skeleton spawner uh, villager trading or just like smelting copper is not an effective way to try and keep your tools repaired So this has been a bit slow going so we're gonna We're gonna put this on pause for the moment We'll have to come back to this in another episode the one nice thing about this disastrous ugly looking hole is that most of my time is spent over here And I don't see it then which is perfect out of sight out of mind Let's move on to the next building project one problem though this next building project requires scaffolding, which requires bamboo, which you normally get in a jungle, and, uh, <clears throat> I obviously haven't been to a jungle any time recently. I thought for the longest time that wandering traders traded bamboo, and then I kept getting wandering traders, kept trading with them, no bamboo, and I looked it up, turns out they don't, so, uh, we have to get bamboo somehow, and I think the only way to get bamboo besides going to a jungle is to search in sunken ships. I think they occasionally have bamboo, so uh, wish me luck going on another 10 hour adventure trying to find stinking bamboo. Well, the good news is it took a lot less than 10 hours this time, but that's because I used an elytra to fly around and find as many sunken ships as possible. I found them pretty quick. I've collected the rest of the things I need. They're just over there, and we're finally ready to get started building this moss factory. Yeah, uh, we'll talk about it more afterward. Not really a factory. Anyway, let's get to building. Shh. 
she's a real beaut, isn't she, guys? I, uh, I'm in love with this build so much. This is uh, such a fun build. I had so much fun designing this. It is chaos. It is covered in moss and all kinds of crazy stuff. Here, I'll give you some uh, insight into what I was thinking when I built this. I wanted it to be sort of a house where the people inside were into, like, botany and doing all kinds of crazy stuff, and they did some sort of weird experiment, and it exploded, and now there's, like, tree bits growing out of the house all over the place, and the moss is taking over the building, and inside, we produce moss. I actually quite like the interior as well. I've already been running the farm. We have a lot of moss already. It's fantastic. It's actually a super small farm. Uh, I'm going to get into this a little bit later in the episode for those of you most interested in this. Uh, I took an ill mango, uh, big old moss farm for making bone meal, and I shrunk it down and I changed it up a little bit to make it a little more simple and also fit inside of a, a smaller scale build. Talking about scale, one of the focuses here was when I built this is I didn't want it to sort of overtake the size of the castle. And I think looking at it from right about here, we're right at the edge of that. It's just big enough that it can have lots of detail given, you know, Minecraft scale that you have to work with. But it also doesn't end up overtaking the castle, and obviously we're a little closer to it at the moment than the castle. If we go, say, somewhere, <laughs> you can see I'm flying. Yep, using my elytra, couldn't resist. If we go right here, this is actually something I thought that was so brilliant. Uh, that little bit of hill kind of covers the bottom of that house, and it makes it look a little smaller from this angle. So this castle still stands out as much more prominent on the landscape and this build, the little moss factory, is a little bit smaller. This build, though, was an absolute menace when it came to inventory management. Oh my goodness, that I use way too many blocks on this. So many unique pieces. I uh, used this little trick with the signs on the trapdoors. It looks sort of like hinges up here. Actually, hold up. Pause, pause, pause. This right here is something I never thought to do before. So the bulk of the building is like a moss brick color, like a more tannish brown. Something, I don't know if you guys have ever noticed looking at spruce, it's got a lot of green in it right here and here. So I felt like it was a good transition block to put beside the overgrown bits. Here's a good example of that and transition into the moss. Anywhere we had these support blocks running back and forth, I swapped them out for a darker green. I think I used green terracotta specifically. A little bit of green concrete here and there. And then one of my favorite bits, it looks kind of funny from close up, this whole like brick to mud to mossy cobblestone in the, the chimneys. But from about this distance, I think it looks great. There's one detail that's missing, and it's because I don't have enough slime yet, is in addition with the experiment, oh, we're on the wrong side of the house. In addition to the experiment where the trees started growing out of the house, I've got these two chimneys have like some green smoke pouring out, like it's the moss is affecting it somehow and it's turned it green. I think it's a fun detail. I think it really brings the build to life. But uh, yeah, enough with this one. We'll come back to it and I'll wander around it some days. Maybe we'll have to do some streams where I give you guys a chance to almost like a building Q&A or something. I have a few more builds I want to get done this episode. I'm just, I'm so thoroughly enjoying this world right now. I'm going to do one, two, three more houses to add to this village. Ta-da! Yeah, I, uh, I did record the actual building of these, but the, the time-lapse footage just wasn't the best, so I opted not to use any of it. I managed to cram a bee farm actually up in the ceiling of this section of the building. Let's go take a quick peek. It is tight. It is hard to get in, for one, but also kind of tricky to navigate this space. There's two of them. Those are the ones that are getting me uh, honey bottles. Yeah, and these two are getting me the uh, whatever the other thing is. Honeycomb. Yeah, the rest of the building... Uh, very very tight the rest of the building does not have an interior yet but I do have a plan for putting something in here because I have bees over there oh now I forget ah well because I have bees over there something else is going over there it's all gonna make sense I promise but over here we got two more houses I decided I needed one on a diagonal because well they can't all just be oriented the same direction so this is our diagonal house we did a little bit of terraforming here on this cliff I really like the dark stone color so we're slowly gonna switch out all of this we don't have enough deep slate or enough time yet to do that. I've distributed all of the villager workstations amongst the houses and put beds in various locations. I'm still being a little bit cheeky with the beds. There's two there and um, three crammed up here for these guys. Uh, just because I don't have enough houses for how many villagers I have still. But I'm working on it. We're making progress. And I did actually do the interior of all three of these, at least the ground floor to some extent. Nothing too special. They're just villager houses. 
But this one, this one I think is very nice. I think this interior looks beautiful. We got the shelving over on the side, the little corner fireplace, and the adorable little bedroom. He's trying to get into his closet because he doesn't like what he's wearing. Um, yeah, I think that these are fantastic. I'm very, very happy with how they turned out, and I've tried to start incorporating some of the newer blocks and adding some color into some of the builds, but I think overall this village is starting to look magnificent. And it's going to look even better once it's totally finished. We're going to put like a little stable here for the horses and we're going to expand that way. Maybe a little bit more. I don't want to end up where I can't like chill out in that building at nighttime and then these villagers are loaded and they start getting killed. So that'd be no, no bueno. Well guys, that's going to have to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for coming along. We did a lot of little building. Um, a lot of little things got done in this episode. Oh, I love the back of this house and the tree growing out of it. Thank you so much for coming along, guys. I'll see you in the next episode. He's not the hero that they thought they needed. But he is... It, uh, I'm not Batman. <laughs>